Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply. This video is to bring you a closer look at the Sugatsuni. This is their part number E190, is this hinge, an E190DC. HES3D-E190DC. This is a three-way adjustable concealed hinge. Um, and we're going to take a look at it. I have reviewed um, concealed hinges by uh, multiple manufacturers, some not adjustable, some adjustable. Um, I don't necessarily have an opinion over which is superior. Um, Non-adjustable hinges, you know, you're going to mortise a door in a frame for a non-adjustable hinge. You're going to put your mortises in the right location. A journeyman, a journeyman carpenter, uh, a fine uh, finished carpenter is certainly not going to have a problem about doing that. Um, I do see the advantage of having the ability to adjust a hinge to compensate for maybe not getting the hole in the right location. Um, really more so, not a carpenter not being able to mortise in the right location, but over the life of the opening, where a door that's square, plumb, level, and true, <laughs> when you turn the building over, is not going to be any of that at some point. Um, and it would be nice to have the ability to tweak a position. One thing that I don't care for is a mention in the installation instructions. Make sure to test the screws for slack at regular intervals once a month for first usage, from first usage, half year, and then every one time, well, one time every year is recommended. So what they're saying is all of the bolts and the fasteners, make sure they're tight and your doors, you know, uh, positioned where you want it. That tells me that, oh, it's good because I can tailor that a bit over the life expectancy of the opening. And it also tells me, well, that seems like a defect in the design that I've got to check and make sure that the screws are, are secured for the adjustments. Um, I have lived with hardware that needs to be maintained, and that is uh, a drag in the sense that you can have exactly what you want provided that you maintain it. Um, so wherever you fall, I tell you that three-way or multi-adjustable hinges are certainly incredibly common nowadays. And I do understand and appreciate the opinion of others why they would want the ability to adjust it over time. I have one here. That's what it looks like. There's two in a box. They're sold as each. If you need three, you're going to get two in one box and one in one box. And I have it removed from the packaging here. I have one screw removed from uh, you know one portion of the hinge, and we're going to go over that. But this is what it looks like. You know, a nice, elegant-looking hinge. One thing that I like a lot about it is that their weight rating is pretty substantial. Concealed hinges like this, by virtue of their design, are capable of handling lots of weight. Two of these hinges are going to hold a 100-kilogram door, so 2.2 pounds per kilogram. You're going to need two of these hinges to hang practically every door that you really would. And you're really only going to add more hinges uh, to keep any sort of bow from occurring or warp from occurring in the door as best as possible. Three hinges will only get you 125 kilograms. So um, typical European style construction would sure see two at the top soldier stacked and then one at the bottom. North American material or at least Canada, uh, United States. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, you know, not biased towards the top at all. There's a lot of logic for putting two hinges at the top. The top hinge holds 70% of the door weight and does 70% of that weight job. So you might want to, you know, consider if you have an especially heavy door to bias two of them at the top. So there's a link below this video to the installation instructions, and let's let's go over that. Um Let's go over that now. Um, thank you for selecting the product. Before starting installation, please read the manual thoroughly to ensure correct installation. You need to go through the installation instructions because this thing needs to be installed or mortised a particular way. There's part of this, there's a door leaf and a frame leaf. However you put it, there's a door leaf and a frame leaf. Uh, this product is a concealed hinge for indoor use to be recessed in the cutout on a door and a door frame. Three-way adjustment function allows vertical, uh, horizontal, and then depth adjustment. It certainly does. This is UL certified. Um, I, uh, 
they do not list where this product carries a three hour rating. Um, if you are doing three hour fire rated doors, let's investigate that fully to be sure that this carries the proper rating of what you're putting it on. Your toaster is UL listed. That doesn't mean it's fire rated. So the fact that this is UL certified, I would want to contact the manufacturer and confirm what it can and cannot go on to. Um, this does not have, if forgive me, it certainly does. It has a UL label right down there. I'm going to say that this is certainly rated for a three-hour application, um, even though they don't tell us what it is. But it does bear the UL listing on the back as well. And we kind of give away a bit of the uh, mystery. This is the frame leaf. That other one is the door leaf, and they have to be installed um, accordingly because this is a fairly unique system where the... Uh, the frame leaf has a separable mounting uh, box that goes into the frame and actually acts as the piece that you're going to mortise uh, or prepare the frame for. They're certainly uh, calculating that you're doing a wood door and a wood frame installation. I don't see any reason why this would not, short of the screws not being machine screws, uh, why this would not work on a door and frame, a steel door and frame, except that there is a requirement to chamfer or radius with a one millimeter uh, chamfer or a one millimeter radius on the vertical style on the pull side and the jam because the door are, goes through its opening and closing cycle so tightly that you need to put a small relief on the door and frame. Okay, that's being called out. Now a hollow metal door and frame will certainly have a small radius that's there and I would bet that that's going to be pretty close to being uh, what you need but if you're putting this onto a hollow metal door we're going to have to make sure that this is going to work um, correctly and uh, you know be confident that there won't be any problem but this is certainly being intended for a wood door and a wood frame this product is a concealed hinge for indoor use. This is not, you know, obviously this is going to con um, contain ferrous-based material. does not, you know, uh, give you any sort of um, concept that it's going to be rust-proof at all. I would use them on an exterior uh, in the sense that I wouldn't have a problem doing it, except this material is non-ferrous. The question is, what is it made of? Um, it's certainly not stainless steel, um, so it's going to be obviously some sort of material that may not be appropriate. It could be zinc. I don't think that they would make these bolts of zinc, but be mindful. They're saying it's for an interior use only. It does look like a very complicated hinge. It's not. When you study it for a moment, it's really an elegant hinge, I would say. Uh, minimum door thickness is 38 millimeter. For those of us that were born um, earlier than millimeter, 1 divided by 25.4 times 38, that's going to give you a 1.49 or an inch and a half thick door. So inch and a half will be the minimum thickness. I don't really see any reason why they would have trouble with a maximum thickness. Not at all. I don't see why you couldn't install this onto a 10 inch thick door um, because you're going to maintain a certain margin from the face of the door and the pull side to where the preparation is for the for the leaf. Comp uh, the components parts. Let's go over what's included. You're going to get two hinges. Uh, in a box, there are two hinges per box. If you you know, there could be one in a box if you buy an odd number. You're going to get your screw covers. You're going to get four pieces in two bags. So you're really going to have. Um, a total of eight of these and these little guys all they do is they just snap over to close off your installation make it look really nice and concealed those little plates will come off you do have a total of eight for two hinges or four per hinge template they're going to give you one paper template which is really nice you can mark your installation with that you know um, I initially was saying, well, we're not going to be able to review this hinge because that's the installation instructions. Luckily, it was in English. But looking at the template, it is simple and straightforward after you study it for a moment. You know, they're giving you 8R6. That means 
that there are, you're looking for eight preparations that have a six inch radius. A uh, six, uh, six inch, milli, uh, pardon me, a six inch, a six millimeter radius. So each one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You're going to look for eight of those. So you're using a 13 millimeter diameter uh, mortise, uh, two flute carbide uh, router bit when you're doing your mortise. And, and, and prepping for the hinge is really straightforward. In fact, you know, they're telling you, here's your frame edge, that vertical line. Here's your, here's your door edge, that vertical line, a maximum of four millimeter. If you go any further into the door, the door is not going to be able to open, is what they're saying. If you go, if you suck that in more than four millimeter from the face of the door, you won't get it open where that outside corner is going to bury into the structure of the frame. Okay. Um, the question that I have that someday I may answer is what can we make that millimeter dimension so that we don't require a chamfer or a radius? Can we make it two millimeter and avoid that altogether? Um, might be an interesting uh, question. Now one thing I want to point out before I forget, if you train your eye on that little dot that is the uh, center line of its pivoting axis, that floats through the opening. So that vertical axis of pivoting will float as it moves through the opening. If you are using this hinge with overhead stops, you need to have the overhead stops um, quoted, manufactured, and with proper templating based on this hinge. Because that vertical axis of pivoting is not like a hinge where it's vertical and not floating, these hinges, that moves through a little bit of an arc. So your overhead stops have to be templated to compensate for that. No problem. Every manufacturer, every major manufacturer of overhead stops and holders can absolutely apply that um, templating for you. I have found that they cost more, uh, so be mindful of that. Now, uh, the caution, if it is necessary to manufacture the frame with sufficient strength so it endures the weight of the door and impact shocks upon closing and opening. Make sure to only use the des designated screws and to fasten them firmly. A cabinet with poor strength or loose screws might result in the door uh, to be dropped down and cause injury. Sure, you don't want the door to fall out of the frame because you've installed it to bubble gum. Um, do not try to use this product for any purposes other than originally intended. Do not use uh, the parts for applications that are out of the specification. I would really think that what they're talking about is the load is vertical. This is not meant to carry a load in this sort of application, but it is meant to carry a load in this application. I would think that's what they're referring to. Okay, I wouldn't want to have a lot of weight being held up like this because that's not how the load is being born. It's being born this way. Use in conjunction with a door closer is not recommended. For soft close option, we recommend Sugatsuni door dampers. Um, yeah, Sugatsuni has these LDDV and LDDS door dampers. They will certainly work. Um, I would think that they're not recommending it with a door closer because of the additional forces that are placed on the hinge knuckle itself as the door is put into its closing cycle. Okay, if there's going to be forces on these pieces that obviously they're not recommending it. Uh, I would think for the cost of this hinge that I'd be able to install a door closer. I would certainly want that. Make sure to follow the designated measurements and specifications as well as horizontal and vertical angles. Make sure that the frame is not warped since it may affect movement of the door. Everything has to be straight and non-warped. This product is, part of, uh, is a part for architectural fittings. After installation, make sure to test the finished product thoroughly to ensure that it is a well that is well functioning and safe. Sure, make sure to test the screws for slack at regular intervals. We talked about that. Now, bottom left of page one, installation drawing example: round edges of door and frame by applying cuts with C1 and over, or R1 and over. C1 C stands for chamfer. One stands for millimeter. R stands for radius or round over radius. One stands for a millimeter. So you have to break those edges. You can do it with a one millimeter sort of round over application uh, or a radius application. 
you can do it with a chamfer. A chamfer is a um, chamfer radius, okay, one millimeter or more. You can make it more if you want. Um, you know, I would prefer to have very tight, straight lines there, so I would be thinking that reducing my dimension from the face of the door to the hinge prep, maximum four millimeter, reducing that down a little bit should be able to alleviate that requirement. We're gonna have to study that if you cannot produce a radius or a chamfer. Uh, re, uh, reference surface of door. So it's really important to be able to have um, that maximum four millimeters so that you can not only clear the hinge when it swings, but so that you can bring your opening to 180 degree. Okay, you don't want to have any, any conflict between the door and frame touching each other um, by mortising it outside of what they're calling out. Lower right hand corner, cut out drawing for door and hardware. So obviously they're telling you, you know, make reference on your door and frame for what you're going to prep. Um, at this stage, Let's jump to the next page because they show us disassembly of hinge. You have a frame leaf and a door leaf. The frame leaf, the frame leaf physically looks different. It has two screws in it. You remove the two inner screws, and I've already removed one, so that you can pull off what they call the base frame. And I'm going to pull that base frame off. And that's what's going to go into the frame. So you're going to prep your frame for your your frame for your bases, which are here. And they're saying be sure to check everything out so that you know that this portion, you know, is going to go towards the exterior or the pull side. You don't want to mount it this way and then try to have the hinge swing this way. You have to have that preparation there for the hinge to when it gets into the opening cycle for the you know, the interlocked leaves of the hinge to be able to reside in that prepped area, okay? Otherwise, it's just not going to work. So, this is going to be towards the pull side of the opening, this prep. And when I look at this, I see something that's really, really, really simple to prep. I mean, super simple. You have two preparations. The only thing that you might need, that I would need, I would need a 13 millimeter two flute carbide router bit is what I would need. The preparation in the door and the frame are um, the same, so there's really nothing to worry about in that regard. 190 millimeter overall. 32, well, no, they're not the same, forgive me. 32 millimeter for the door and 34 millimeter for the frame. And then 140 millimeter for the body. So what they're saying is, this is going to be our frame portion, 34 millimeter wide, 190 millimeter overall height. Okay. Now, you're going to do two preps. At least I would do two preps. I would do my body prep, which is going to give me the body, all of this. I know from the template it's going to be 38 millimeter deep, 140 millimeter tall, 34 millimeter wide. Establish your center line. Mark your center line. Be mindful that if you're marking, let's say, you know, eight inch from the top of the door to the center line of the first hinge on the on the door, be mindful that if you have an eighth of an inch margin at the top of the door, you're going to be when you stick your tape measure up there. Now you got to go to eight and one eighth inch. That will give you a center line. So be sure to compensate for that. But you're going to do your prep. 140 millimeter, 38 millimeter deep, 34 millimeter wide, you're done. Then, well, you're not done, but reset your template. Then go 180 millimeter overall height at 10 millimeter deep, and you're only going to need to do this portion, 10 millimeter and uh, 25 millimeter, right? 190 minus 190 minus 140 divided by 2, 25 millimeter. Super simple to prep. It really is. Mark your holes. Pre-drill your holes for the screws. 
pre-drill the holes, don't split the frame for goodness sakes. At that point, you will install your base for the frame, and the screws are included for all of this stuff. They appear to be a number 10 by maybe an inch and a quarter uh, flathead Phillips, you know, sheet metal screw is what I'd call it, but appropriate for wood threads. So we've disassembled the hinge on page two, step one. Step two, installing hinge to door and cabinet. Okay, we've talked about your, your preparation. The only difference on the door is that it was 32 millimeter wide. Do your deep preps first, come out and do your shallow prep so that when you're exiting the tool, um, doing your deep prep, there's nothing on the shallow prep to unintentionally damage. Um, hanging the door, so what you're going to do is you're going to get all of this attached to your door. Okay, pre-drill your holes, attach everything. Then you're going to bring this assembly, because this is now installed on the frame, you're going to bring your entire assembly together. You're going to install your two screws, which are your vertical height adjustment screws, by the way. Okay, one there, the other one down here. And thankfully, they give us a Allen wrench for all adjustments that are needed. So I'm going to just take that Allen wrench and bring these screws down so that that plate doesn't move on us at all. And they're going to state several times that you have to shim the door. You have to have it wedged. You have to have it in position. Before installing base door to, frame, to door frame, check the mounting direction. If, cup, if coupling it with the hinge main body, again, you got to make sure that that cutout prep is towards the pull side of the opening like they're showing there. Three, while holding the door, insert hinge main body into the base frame on door frame. Keep holding the door and fix the hinge with the fixing screws at once. Door is kind of precarious. It's in the opening. You've got it wedged. You've got it lifted. You've got it set. Get everything attached. Okay, those two screws I just did. Tighten them down. At that point, you're not really adjusted at all. So be mindful that you are, you are, uh, you have the door braced or wedged or fixed at a height where you're not going to, you know, have the door resting on the floor. Uh, it wouldn't allow that much vertical adjustment anyway. Okay, so wedge your door in place. Get it shimmed in place. Adjusting the door. Now at this point, your hinge is secure. Now all you're going to do really is adjust it. So that does take a little bit of studying, but it's super simple. Um, you know, this is the studying right on the hinge. So the bottom line is this. Um, let's look at the install installation instructions first. You can adjust the hinge this way. You can adjust it this way. You can adjust it vertically. So this way, this way, this way. It can be adjusted within reason of all three axes, 3D. When adjusting vertical or backward forward motion, loosen the screws 360 degree, one revolution, then hold the door at the suitable position and retighten the screws. Um, use wedges to support the door. When adjusting horizontal position, turn horizontal adjustment screw. There are two screws per hinge. The gap between the door and frame will be expanded by turning the screw to the right um, or, you know, or tightening it. Um, then there is the graphic, uh, the line art drawing that shows all of this stuff. At this point, let's just play with it. So it's quite obvious the vertical adjustment. If I tighten this screw and this screw, I'm going to keep it in position. Okay, that's all. I'm just keeping it loose to demonstrate. This screw here is what's going to allow you the affecting of the projection. And I can demonstrate that by put, if you just watch the margin here, I can put the wrench inside of here and I can turn that. It's a little stiff. You may not be able to see it too much, but it definitely changes. That projection changes. Definitely. And of course you can do that. You will do it top and bottom. So these two screws are going to give you this way. We've already talked about vertical. The last thing is, I guess horizontal they call it. 
and that's going to be achieved by this screw and this screw. They've got three little lines there, and as I loosen those little screws, loosen them just a little bit more. Now you see the third, right at the tip of my finger, now you see that third axis. Okay, so you can definitely move this stuff. I have not heard people calling up and saying, hey, those hinges, boy, they're no good. They come loose. The door sags. I never really hear that. Um, what's really elegant about hinges like this is that you don't see the hinges, um, meaning there's no projecting hardware. There's no hinge barrel hanging off. And concealed hinges are incredibly elegant because of the aesthetic that they apply, that they um, will allow the end user, the designer, the client, the architect, um, the ability to not see what's happening. You might be doing a wall of, you know, it could be a, a project where you have, you know, a wall of Wangi veneer. Um, or, or even more exotic things. I've seen, I have seen very exotic, uh, exotic applications uh, where there has been uh, manta ray skin that has been turned into panels on walls. Here in Florida, you do see some more nautical type things. Um, but if you're doing some very, very uh, extraordinarily unique applications, the last thing you want to do is see hardware. And that's where hinges like this really come into play because they allow people to achieve the look that they want without really without compromise. So that's where a hinge like this is really going to be elegant. Um, and like I've said, I've, I've not heard people say that you know it came loose on me. I would personally um, use thread lock on these vertical screws. I would use thread lock anywhere that I could. Um, I don't think I can anywhere else, but the other screws did not seem, and they do have washers on them. They're not lock washers. But they do, you know, the hinge does appear to be an elegant type solution for those applications. Um, that exhausts everything on the installation instructions with the exception of that phone number right there. Okay. I could I, I, I made my best guess as to what that all meant, C1 and R1, and I knew it meant chamfer. I thought it meant round over. I didn't know what the one meant because installation instructions that are authored in the United States, I'm you know, I'm programmed to understand what they mean and based on experience. But when the author is outside of the United States or Canada, um, it's written in such a way that I'm not familiar with. So I had to call them and I spoke to the first person who said, uh, let me get you over to him. I got over to him. He's like, hang on one second. I see what you're talking about. Let me go talk to the tech guy. He came back within a minute or two, chamfer or radius. And I thought, I just wanted to be sure because I need to explain it to somebody. And, that, and, they, and they were really great at the, at the technical support aspect. And that require that technical support coupled with a good product makes an item that you should consider to use. Um, you can buy a fantastic piece of hardware, but if you can't get someone to tell you how to install it, you know, you know, um, is it really the hinge that you want to use? I don't have a lot of experience with Sugatsuni because we are primarily a commercial um, uh, provider of hardware. And I don't bump into specifications where I see it often. I see it very occasionally. I have a link below this video to the manufacturer's page where you can pull up not only all the Sugatsuni products that we sell, which aren't at this time very many, but a link to that full product catalog. And that is an amazing document because it has solutions that here in the United States that we don't necessarily have, even though they, we have the same problems, but this Japanese company has solved it a different way. The one thing that's remarkable on what they have is a double acting hinge, okay, for a, a double acting door, completely non-ferrous. 
So customers call me, I need a double acting hinge, I'm installing it outside. Okay, well I can sell you one that's made of steel, or I've got this Sugatsune that's 100% non-ferrous, stainless steel. Let's make it happen. So they, they, if you're looking for a double acting hinge for a full size, full thickness door, Sugatsune has one and it's in their, their product catalog. You'll have to scroll through many pages to find it, but it's certainly there. I wouldn't hesitate to use this hinge. Uh, it's an easy mortise. It's an easy way to um, adjust in three dimensions. I say jump in the water's fine. Any questions on the Sugatsune HES 3D E190 DC hinge or any other Sugatsune product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.